welcome to the improv. Some, as always, I'm your host, Spencer. Yes, it has not changed in all the episodes we've done. Wow. But today with me, I have a very special guest. I got in trouble for saying very special guest every time, so now I'm going to say this is the incomparable Ian. Ian, how's it going? Oh my god, incomparable? I wasn't ready for that. And hey, can... <laughs> Congrats on keeping your host job, dude. I'm glad they didn't fire you. Thanks. Yeah, I just got to talk to the producer and the director about that. Uh, by the way, is also me. Um, so oh, see, yeah, I, don't fire yourself. Unless there I you fire myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd this like is to. My show, baby. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to fire cool. myself as camera operator because I don't know why I'm being so blown out right yeah, now. I'd fire you as gaffer, honestly, not as camera <laughs> operator. Uh, okay. No yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I okay. fire myself as gaffer too, because we all know where my light's coming from. If you oh, look, oh, there it is. Whoops. Oh, it, looks, it, looks like, it looks like I'm like an alien on that side. Like I got like a spaceship coming in. Yeah. Wait, the, yeah. It's, on this. Wow, this is weird. It's because almost the light's coming from here, but my hand it's flipped. It's reversed. This is a lot. I me. know. It's crazy. I know. It's almost like very like angelic. You just got this backlight. I was gonna say you just have like looks like you got wings. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Angel wings. <laughs> 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 that's it uh, anyway enough about uh our attempts at being angelic let's talk about you ian and all of your improv because everyone knows all about my improv um, oh yeah what is your improv experience uh what is your relationship to improv whatever you want to tell us is golden oh my goodness um i god i guess i'll just start somewhere towards the beginning because like you know i've always i grew up around like comedy and i've always really loved it you know when i was a kid my parents were always watching like monty python saturday night live those were always on um i didn't really discover improv till i was like about middle school and a friend of mine showed me whose line and i thought it was hilarious and then about high school uh a friend of mine asked me hey have you ever heard of com this thing called comedy sports I was like, no, I don't know what that is. And he says, well, like my high school had like a high school league team. So he says, well, just come to the show. I think it'll be lots of fun. So we go to the show and, you know, it was amazing. And I was just blown away. Um, and so I kind of, that's kind of how I got involved in my like high school theater department. It was so I could do improv because, you know, I always enjoyed comedy and making people laugh. And that improv is great because like, you know, you don't really prepare. You don't just sit down like write anything. <laughs> and I was an incredibly lazy student and so which transitioned to a lazy adult and I still don't like preparing for things so improv is a real sweet spot for me where you can just go in and you know be present with others and uh, create something wonderful just in the moment especially when you have an audience because then you and all those people leave with like your own inside jokes right it's that show is never going to happen again and so god I guess I yeah I to back up a bit I guess I joined my high school league team in Houston. I was a sophomore in high school, so that would have been about 2011. So yeah, I've been doing uh, I've been doing improv for about 10 years now. I just not realized I'm muted uh, because <laughs> because uh, I was like so into it, and then I was yeah. just like talking because one of the dogs that I'm watching was barking, so I like didn't want it to get into interrupting, and so I was oh, like, sure. "Wow, that's so fascinating!" And I'm just like. <laughs> Mute, like, yeah. Even, well, I saw um, the little icon, and I was like, "Man, Spencer is the most courteous person." <laughs> he muted yeah. himself. I was like, I was like so into it, and then I literally was like, "Oh, that's so awesome!" And then I realized you couldn't hear any of it because I was just yeah. talking on mute. But that being said, um, that's so awesome. Uh, the, the next question I have actually kind of answered a little bit already, which is, "What do you love about improv?" But I want to know if you yeah. want to expand on that a little bit more about if there's anything else or, like, um, uh, if you want to expand on what you already said. Oh, man. What do I love about it? Yeah, I guess it's just, like, the – or it's – when it's just so organic and when, like, everybody's participating, like, right there. Because, like, you know, I guess, like, the three big, like, genres, I guess, of, like, performing comedy are, like, you know, improv, you have sketch, and you have stand-up. And I think improv is the only one where the audience is, like, is, like, innately on your side, right? Because, like, with sketch, I mean, you kind of have to earn it. But with stand-up, like, you really have to earn it because it's just you up there. With improv, you have your team and then, you know, the whole crowd's there and you're getting suggestions from them. 
So like they're part of the show too, and so like they're sitting right there with you, and uh, I don't know. I just think that that's kind of what makes it so great that it kind of becomes this you know community thing. Really, the whole room is involved from start to finish, and so all of you get to create these beautiful, wacky, ridiculous moments mm. together because you know someone in the audience said you know cabbage uh, what it's not a great <laughs> audience suggestion off the top of my head every suggestion is great i mean not every suggestion but cabbage yeah. is a great suggestion in comparison to something sure absolutely i'm i, I know i've never <laughs> been a fan of when audience members just shout out like cabbage or like pineapple like oh pineapple's the worst or I, or my my least favorite is improv yeah, oh doing? yeah like hilarious <laughs> how very meta i remember um because when I started doing comedy sports in Houston, they had like retired suggestions. Comedy sports Houston did. It was Elvis, Jello, and Tutu. So if you ever wow. shouted one of those out, they were like, "That's one of our retired suggestions. We're not going to use it." But then I guess yeah, when I first started doing high school league, Skyrim had just come out, and <laughs> we got Skyrim every single show. And so the referees just started retiring Skyrim for like high school oh, league funny. shows because. Everybody's suggestion was like Skyrim related. <laughs> That's so funny because that that didn't last very long. That suggestion, <laughs> Not yeah, <even> a few months. <laughs> yeah, like for yeah, like from November 2011 till about like March 2012, that was like the hot spot for Skyrim suggestions. <laughs> After that, it was just tacky. I've never even played it. I don't. I couldn't even tell you the first thing about what happens in Skyrim. But that means it'd be great for me to do an improv scene about because I have no idea what that's about. Uh, there are dragons, and that's. Uh, I don't really even all, know. I don't even. Yeah, that's really all you need to know. That. Honestly, there are dragons. So like, that's it. Great. So it's like Game of Thrones, the video game. Got it. Great. Pretty awesome. much. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've never seen. I've never seen Game of Thrones either. I'm probably about to lose some. Stuff oh wow! Oh, well. I watch. Oh, well. Okay, I watched three. <laughs> This is true. I watched three seasons of Game of Thrones before I realized I wasn't into it. <laughs> yeah, I did that. I did that with a show. Like, I watched the whole series. I mean, it was, a one, it was a one season show, and maybe that's why. I was just like, I don't really like this, but there's only, like, 12 episodes, so I guess I'll just watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might as well. It's only, like, 12 like, hours. Because uh, it's like The Simpsons. Like, I mean, there are some really oh, great episodes. Oh, my God, yeah. And I, I had Disney Plus for free for a year with the Verizon subscription, and so, like, I really enjoyed watching it but like after like 13 seasons i was like there's still 20 more seasons to go yeah. gosh how many episodes are there? yeah they're, they're, i mean there are some shows like that like always sunny in philadelphia i've like i never got into because by the time it kind of like popped up on my radar so like maybe i should sit down and watch this there was just so much that i just felt overwhelmed yeah that was i just like i can't this there's like a hundred seasons of that i'm not gonna get into that <laughs> i will say I see why a lot of shows like end after the sixth season because of syndication specifically, but also yeah. like six season seems to be when things are running out of steam. Like that's oh absolutely like that to me is like the hot spot. I mean, there's shows like like Glee. I really liked the first three seasons of Glee, and then they graduated, and I was like, what are they gonna do after this? And then it didn't work. It was like a whole new show. After yeah, that. for sure. I love Glee. But I think seasons four through six, when they weren't in school, I was like, the whole thing is about them being in Glee Club in high school. And then it kind of diverted from that whole thing that it was almost a whole new show on its own. But then yeah. I also love My Big Fat Greek Life, which is which has eight episodes. Like, that, I love that show. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you do have those, those shows that, like, know when to call it, right? I think in terms of comedy, maybe How I Met Your Mother is the best example I can think of at the top of my head. Um I know Breaking Bad was five seasons, and they did it well, but it's not a comedy, uh, whatever. Um, I don't know, yeah, I guess... can't really think of a whole lot of sitcoms that, you yeah. know, didn't really overstay their welcome. I guess for America, because, like, every British sitcom is, like, two seasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two series. Yeah, a series, uh, and, you're right, sorry. And they're, also, and they're also shorter, like, I mean, if you look at, like, The Office, they had, a, like, a full-on, complete, like full show in like, yeah, like eight episodes or like yeah, nine was, episodes yeah, versus like, I thought it was like 10 or 12 I don't remember oh honestly. it might have been like 12 yeah I mean they had I know they had two series plus like a special but yeah. like extras I love the show extras we're not even talking about improv anymore but I love the show extras that's um, a good show I see all of you and it's only it's only two series um and it's a great show but it was also like yeah there were the jokes were funny and like that show like ended when it should have ended like yeah. that was that was a, like a perfect amount. Flight of the Concords. I could have seen the probably more episodes of that, but I mean, 
Sure. It's because I love every episode because there's not a season because there's only so many seasons, like two seasons. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not like, oh, this is like the season that's not so great. Yeah. Um, that it all is just great. Family Guy, I love Family Guy, but after like six or seven seasons, it kind of was I was like, You got canceled for a reason. Yeah. Also I love you, Family Guy, like no shame. Like I, I, thought, I still love Family Guy. I can I, I feel like I don't know if that show's still going or not. It like, is. Oh it is. Okay, yeah, I thought but like um I still watch it. Uh, I'm invested. Uh, Seth MacFarlane isn't like really a part of it. it. Like he comes in and does the voices and he leaves, right? I think he's still. I think he's still like the creator and the writer of the show. I think he's still like legit, like is part of it. Okay, I thought he was like yeah, you know, still credit as a creator. I didn't know if he was like how heavily involved he was in the process of like making it though. <laughs> I think he. I think he's like. I think he's like running the show there. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't know because like it was a few years ago, and a friend of mine told me, "Have you seen the new?" He asked me, "Have you seen the new Family Guy?" And I. I thought he was joking, because I really thought that show was, like, off... I thought they stopped making new episodes of it. <laughs> I think it was canceled. I think it was canceled twice, maybe? Maybe wow. I know for sure once it was canceled and then brought back. And I think it... But also, American Idol's been canceled twice and has come back, so, I mean... I didn't know that it had been canceled twice. Well. I might have only been canceled once. American Idol, for sure, was canceled twice, because they had... They, they said, oh, it's going to be a new... Se- uh, this is our final season... And then they brought it back, and then they said, "Oh, it's going to be the final season." But then I think what like another station picked it up, so it's not on Fox. Oh, anymore. okay, yeah. Channel. Oh, so they did the so, Brooklyn Nine Nine thing. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> technic- so technically, it was canceled a second time, but yeah. it also went straight to another uh, show uh, channel. So it technically wasn't. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole long thing. Anyway, let's dive back into improv. Yeah, let's uh, talk one- about making stuff up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> One of the one of the big things I've learned as an improviser in all my time improvising is if I've done it that much. I mean, I've been doing it like professionally in quotes uh, since like. I feel I like here, unless you're Wayne like six, Brady, everyone does yeah. it professionally. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like <laughs> I mean, I've been off and on six years in LA. I've been doing improv, but yeah, but I've also noticed like I don't. I know that I have like a relatively short attention span. Like I just can't remember things very well, especially now that I've like. <laughs> cross the bridge over 30 years old like i'm definitely like yeah we're getting things but um <laughs> not as much as not as much as my bones like want to pop every single time i move anything oh uh, i feel you like i my, the, literally when i turned 30 the week i turned 30 i threw out my back i like sat on my tailbone funny and it was bruised for like a week and like my knees <laughs> oh, just no. constantly like popped whenever i moved and like i like <laughs> like i like twisted my ankle or something like all in the first week and i was like this oh is my goodness <laughs> yeah my it, my knees started making explosion sounds when i was like 19 oh, and i'm geez. 25 now i know that's hard to believe i am 25 but my knees like the oh, yeah. sound of my knees it's like it sounds like i saw the dinosaurs die you know yeah but you're also a quarter of a century so what do you yeah. know this, what this is, is time pretty... anymore um <laughs> i got to spend my whole 30th in quarantine so that was really exciting. oh no um, oh, such yeah. a milestone yeah i did 24 and 25 in quarantine oh yeah i just i i got 30 in january so i just missed the first go around. okay yeah but uh if, I, if there's a second go around i'm gonna celebrate my 30th next year okay <laughs> i hope you don't have two quarantine birthdays because speaking from I experience we, yeah. it's not well, fun hope- <laughs> that would be a whole nother like oh well, i guess it's not even a, i was gonna say it's a whole nother year but it's like six months <laughs> yeah <laughs> if we were <laughs> like we're still in this in six months i'd be like who's not vaccinated <laughs> like come on well, like well like well like 51 percent of the uh america anyway um yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the improv summit yeah Max edition no um uh one of the things that I've learned, I see, I already forgot because of short attention span, like I said, um, is that when I do scenes, especially when I do like long form, like heralds, where you have to bring characters back, mm-hmm. and I have to be brought back as a character, I forget who I was like two minutes ago. I'm like, wait, who who was I in this scene? Remind me of what my je- what my thing is, what my job is. Um, For sure. So 99.9% of the time, I just forget everything I do in improv. But there are occasions where I remember something because it was a big aha moment for me, whether as a teacher, as a coach, as a performer, as an audience member. And they stick with me because they're either so funny or so memorable. Are there any scenes that you've either done as an audience member, as a performer, as a coach, a teacher, whatever, that you remember? Like, you're like, I will never forget this because of how memorable it was for me um oh that's a really good question um i know it's so hard because it's like maybe there is but i can't think of anything well i'll start by saying like i know how you feel because like you know 
No, I started out in short form and then I went to long form. I feel like this is a pretty common track for a lot of people. Yeah, and um, I'm the opposite way, and I learned very. Oh, quickly. you went the other when way. I doing, when I started doing comedy sports, I was like, oh, if I had started here, I would have felt so much more confident in everything I was doing. Because yeah. Long form is such a specific skill that you pick up in short form, and when you do the short form, it actually builds the ability for you to drag it out in long form. But going from where I have all this time to not having time, right. I was like, what do I what do I do? How do I do this? So Yeah, well, because for me I really struggled with the same thing of like remembering like, oh right, like I kind of vaguely remember this character and what was the context of this scene. But like when I first started doing long form, like when I started the show, I would have like a killer like first scene, maybe second scene. <laughs> but you know, that's maybe like four or five minutes tops and you gotta fill a whole hour, right? <laughs> so that I would just die for like 55 minutes up there with my teammates um, but I remember I want to say it was my junior year of college and I was with my I was with my long form team and it was a pretty big team it was there like with the school at the I went to UT Austin University of Texas and like kind of the long form uh, team there was called Snafu which I was on mm-hmm. and it was a pretty big team there's like 16 of us and um yeah i guess it was my junior year and only four of us could make it to this show and it was like all it was me and three other guys and so we were like let's make it like the dude show and so it was just the four of us we had a pretty good sized crowd and <laughs> before the show we were like all right uh us as a team we have a bad habit of using all of the suggestions in the first scene so let's really make a point of mm-hmm. not using all the suggestions in the first scene sure and we got oh what were our suggestions it was like i think it was like a school potato and like prison i want to say was our suggestions i can see that scene happening I'm and easily i just <laughs> i just pieced it together oh yeah i think it was teacher it says it was teacher potato and prison i yeah, think easy. those were our three cool. suggestions but yeah, and literally, and, yeah literally the first line the first line of the show my friend Nick goes out there. He goes, "All right, class, welcome to a uh, potato whittling class in in this prison that we're in." Like all three right yeah. away. Uh huh. And you know, <laughs> so we just kind of had to roll with it, but it ended up being like a fantastic show. Um, and I think part of it was because, like, you know, when you're in a good mood and everybody shows up, just kind of like good in a good mood. Because we always had our shows on Friday nights. Especially in college, everyone's happy on a Friday night. And I guess because there was only four of us, like, there's nowhere to hide, right? Like, you kind of have to go out there. You don't have, like, the safety of numbers. And it ended up being, like, a really, really great show. And we had so much fun. We got a ton of laughs. Um, It started at this, like, (laughs) you know, prisoners making sculptures out of potatoes. And it kind of ended with us, like... uh, I think we were making fun of uh, Trump running for office at the time because at that time it was still a joke that he would be president. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and I, I really wish I could remember the whole arc, but like we, ex- <laughs> I guess my, this is a long-winded way of saying like we made a note of not doing something, and that was the first thing we did, yeah. and we still ended up having a phenomenal show, and the crowd was into it, and it was just it was just such a great time. You know, um, that's awesome. I know. Have you ever had a show where like you kind of black out? Like once you finish, you like kind of don't remember what you just did. Oh, like every show. Okay. <laughs> but like those I mean, really I, good ones, you know. <laughs> I I honestly I I don't think I could ever tell you a show where I remember everything that happened in a show. I could possibly pull like a scene or like a line or like a but like I remember one time I crossed from stage left to stage right. And I got a laugh. I don't know what I did, but I did like, <laughs> like awesome. Like I can get like real specific like that about things, but I could not remember. Like sometimes I'll be like, I know I walked from left to right, and there was a laugh, so I don't know what happened, but I just remember that. Like, yeah. Well, when I did, um... it's hard. It's hard with Harold because if you're the character that they bring back, I'm like, wait a second. Yeah, you're like, what was, was funny about beat? this? Yeah. I was like, this is the second beat. I was the character. What was my thing? What did I do? Yeah. Who was, what was my thing? Who are you? How do... What's happening? How, how do, do I, I hide this? Yeah. How do I heighten this? <laughs> Yeah, I, I did a show, um, is Comedy Sports Austin had restarted my senior year of college, and we had this one show, 
and we sat down to do notes afterwards and every time people were like oh do you remember this thing i was like i honestly don't remember that scene at all like once we were done i just oh, yeah. forgot the whole show oh yeah it's getting notes after an improv show it's like so when you did this thing i'm like did i do that yeah you yeah remember? i'm like i you know you remember <laughs> i was really like don't. i honestly don't <laughs> But okay, noted. I got it. I'll fix it yeah. next time. Even though I have no idea. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, do you have any plugs or pitches or anything you want to like throw out? Um, I guess right now, uh, I, you know, we're not performing live yet. Um, I know Chad Shapiro has been a guest on this show, so I just, I perform comedy in Comedy Frenzy with him. Uh, so I do that. I also have my own podcast. It's about uh, it's called Baseball is Dumb. It's all about the history of baseball, but not really like how the rules got started. I just kind of like to find uh, just kind of wacky stories, really. Um, mm-hmm. Like we did an episode about um, uh, there was a great bat heist in the night in like 1994. Oh wow. Um, yeah, the Cleveland Indians uh, committed a, a brazen bat heist against the Chicago White Sox, which was really great. Um, we talk about a guy who threw a no-hitter while tripping on LSD. Nice. Um, so those are the kinds of stories we like to tell. Um, I have about, like, five episodes up right now. Um, so if that's uh, something that you or the audience would be into, check. it's on Spotify if you want to check it out. It's on Apple sure. Podcasts. I think we're on Pocket Casts and um, another platform. I don't remember. <laughs> nice. it'll, be linked, it'll be linked down in the YouTube, but I have a question for you. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Fever Pitch with Jimmy, the remake with Jimmy Fallon and Drew Barrymore. Yes or no? Fever Pitch remake, but with Drew. Well, no, no, it's a real movie, but I'm asking, is yeah. it yes or no? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm down. I'm in. Yeah, I love it. I think it's actually, I didn't like it the first time I watched it. I watched it again like two weeks ago. I actually liked it. I finally um, saw the original Mad Max for the first time last night. Really glad they made more of them. <laughs> um, I I saw Mad Max Fury Road, and that's all I will say about that. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw it. Um, so, Ian, thanks so much for joining me here on yeah, thanks the for having me. Summit. And hey. I have one final question for you, yeah. which is why the Improv Summit exists. Um, I always have a lot of people pre-pandemic, but even during pandemic saying, Spencer, you do a lot of improv. Where should I take improv? And I have a hard time answering that question because it's such a vast amount of information to give to someone for a question that honestly feels quite vague. Um, But if someone asked you that question, if they said, Ian, where should I take improv? What would be one piece of advice or one tidbit that you would give them to help guide them on their improv journey? Um... Really, I don't think you can, you can really go wrong, in my opinion. Um, anywhere from, like, I don't know, maybe one of the more established theaters like like Second City or, you know, comedy sports, even to just, like, your local, like, spot, um, I think is a great place to start. Um, honestly, if you have, like, a smaller local theater, classes might be cheaper <laughs> than somewhere mm-hmm. like... I got here in L.A. where, you know, at UCB classes are, like, $400 for a 101 class and um i mean it's lots of fun so honestly anywhere you can get in is a great place to start because improv is really all about just being present and like you know being vulnerable and sharing with your teammates and you know creating you know creating that scene in that moment with the people around Mm -hmm. you so you don't really need you know the banner of like you know second city or groundlings or whatever um even though those names are prestigious and i'm not trying to knock those theaters um right you know obviously they have a great list of alumni but you know i don't think there's a wrong way to do it which is yeah. uh kind of like improv in a way <laughs> hey what do you know it all comes back brought to- it all back uh, baby <laughs> Bring it all back. <laughs> it's an S Club 7 song. Are you, were you around when that song was around? <laughs> um, I was not around when most songs were around, actually. I was had a... No. And so I work at a bar, and I was singing along to um, Everybody's Working for the Weekend by Loverboy. And Everybody's a cus- working for, for the, the weekend. weekend. Yeah, and a customer got mad at me. She, was, she says to me, you're too young to know this song. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. My parents played me all their music growing up, and then more songs came out, and then like when it hit like 2000, and when I got to like 
my master's degree, I was like, okay, I'm done listening to music now. It yeah. <laughs> like, honestly, I feel but, like the more music I... Like, I go backwards. Like, I've... It, like, I've listened to, like, all of Led Zeppelin's discography, but now I'm going to, like, Albert King and Ch- uh, Chuck Berry mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. uh, Little Richard. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, Tell did you me. hear the new, uh, like, Olivia Rodrigo? I'm like, oh, no, but I listened to this album Chuck Berry put out in 1954. Want to hear that? It's like uh, the chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and below. I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. There's a time, especially, um like, like really but, early hip hop and rap that's just like ridiculous, oh, and you just can't help hip-hop. but love it. You could get with this, oh, you could get with that. With that. You could oh, get with this, oh, this is where it's at. Uh, or like, if you listen, who's like, the black chick? what's the black chick? Yeah, or like compared to like, like if you listen to Kendrick Lamar or like now, These and then compare it, the and then compare it with like Rapper's Delight, like the first like big like rap song, it's like. How did hip hop even become a thing? Because this is ridiculous. From a guy going motel, hotel, Holiday Inn, and everyone was like, "This yeah. is awesome." Yeah, but it's also like you can see you can see how it transitions because the music, like the hip hop, is very like hip hop and to hip-hop? the beat, uh-huh. and yeah. everything is very on on the beat. Yeah. But then, like you get to like hip hop now, and it's like da 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 da. It's like kind of like yeah. more like loose, and so it's very yeah. interesting how that is. Because all that good stuff, bust the move, that's a good one. Anyway, um, <laughs> thanks so much for joining me here on the Hey, thanks for having me. This was so much fun. Um, but before you go, um, yeah. I said that was the last question I had for you. And as always, I'm a big old liar on this. Ah, oh, I should have seen this coming. Yeah, you should have. I know your reputation. You watch those episodes. I, um, I, I know your reputation but, is a big fat liar. Yeah, you know, I'm just Paul Giamatti. <laughs> uh, uh, saw that movie in theaters. Uh, oh wow! In theaters, I watched that I on Disney 11. Channel. <laughs> I saw it when I was eleven, I think. <laughs> <laughs> in theaters. Um, anyway, um, but a question I have for you now is: We've been talking a lot about improv and other uh-huh. stuff. Uh, would you like to do some improv? Oh, absolutely, Spencer. Let's do it. Let's do right it here. Distance right okay. now. <laughs> Let me get loose. Let me get limber. Yeah, do it. <sighs> Ted. Huh? Ted. What? Mike. It's Mike. Mike? Oh my god, Mike, how are you? How have you been? Oh my god, it's been... What? Six years. Six years? Yeah. Uh, how's, uh, uh, how's, how's Teresa? Oh, great, great. We actually, uh, we, since we last talked, we've had about five kids. Five kids. That's almost yeah. one a year. You've been busy. Yeah. Well, yeah, well I mean, not... we had triplets, so I mean. Oh my goodness! Well, I see why you're expedited. Yeah. Yeah, I see why your cart's so full. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow Diapers my... are not cheap. Let me tell you. They oh, I'll cheap. bet. I I will bet, my friend. I've. A, uh, I gotta tell you, I'm just having a. I'm just having a heck of a time here trying to make a decision on the kind of beans I want, and I'm so forgetful. I always forget, like, four well, or five things. I should ask you, like, how are you doing? You still single? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um... Yeah, I am, Mike. I am single, oh. and, um... Sorry, that was a joke. Yeah, no, 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 it's it's fine, it's fine. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. It's a, it's okay. It's fine. You know, I only gotta buy for me right now. It's, uh... I guess I could have rephrased it better. I could have said, like, are you seeing anybody? Yeah. No, it's our... Yeah, yeah. Mike, it's okay. I just okay. said, are you still single? <laughs> that was no, Mike, it's... Totally my bad. Mike, it's all right. It's okay, man. I mean, I'm happy for you. You're you're, you're, you're a handsome man, and, you know, there's somebody for everybody, right? Somebody for... It's like, uh, you know, I'm going to pick a can of beans. There's a can of beans for me out there for me to for me to get. Yeah, speaking of, I just I just need to like grab a couple of uh, cannellini beans. Um, if you don't yeah. mind. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get out of your way. It's not okay. yeah, no, it's all good. It's all no worries. No, hey, let's let's keep chatting. Let's keep yeah, chatting. Yeah, I just yeah. need to grab the, the cannellinis. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, um, like, uh, wow, does that those cans really feed everybody in the house? I mean, you got, yeah, you got I mean some hungry yeah. mouths in there. Well, the kids, the kids, they're babies. They don't eat beans yet. They're they're still on baby food. So I got uh, a bunch of that down in the bottom. Yeah, yeah this, with this, a little Gatorade. I'll, I'll bet they're picky. I'll bet they're, they're real picky about that. Uh, wow, so yeah, can, Cannellini. Uh, 
What about you? What about you? You still living out of your mom's garage? Or- uh, you know, I uh, I am. I am, Mike. I sure oh. am. But uh, look, I'm able to pay for my own groceries now. Sorry, that was a bit of a joke. I just... I thought Yeah, I no, know. Mike, it's fine. Mike, Sorry. it's fine. Really, it's okay, because I pay for my own groceries, and you know what? I even I even chip in a, on the internet bill. Okay? I can provide for myself. Sorry, I am an I adult. Just, it was a joke. I, I apologize. Those yeah, no, it's fine. It's just... fine. I'm. It's fine. Mike, it's fine. I'm single and I live out of my mom's garage, but you know what? I'm happy. Great. That's that's good. That's good. Yeah. So, um, how's your pro- how's your promotion, man? Did you get a Did you get a promotion? I did. I did. I'm actually the CEO now of a company. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty exciting. Uh, what about you? What about you? You uh, cool? Are you still, um, still freeloading? You still freeloading and like doing your little crafts and stuff? Or what? Uh, well, first of all, it's called Etsy and it's work. All right. Um, yeah, you know, I make it was, it was a joke, I make I my own stuff. If not, Mike, it's fine. Mike, it's fine. Okay, I make my own stuff. I I run a small business. All right, it's cool. It's fine. Um, mm. but yeah. Uh, oh, I saw your post. Did you guys ever get that second house in Aspen? We did. We did. One in Aspen, one in Vail, one oh, in Scottsdale. We actually wow. like, uh, what, like basically one house per kid. <laughs> well, well, good for you, man. What about, what about good you? Good for you. Pokemon cards? <laughs> you know what, Mike, I am. And, and I've I found a community through doing that. And it's been great. Sorry, I just, it was a joke. I just. Uh... No, Mike, it's fine. Mike, it's fine. It's really fine. And see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everybody so much for coming to the Improv Summit. I'm Spencer, that's Ian. See you next time. Bye.